Good afternoon, people watching at 65. Lisa Boyce, I'm going to give you a verse of scripture. <clears throat> it is so much happening right now, and I've been in and out all day, and I can barely keep track of everything that's going on right now. But let me at least give you this verse of scripture, and this is for everybody. It says here, and this is out of Philippians chapter 4. It says, be careful, verse 6, be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. That's Philippians 4, 6, and 7, so... Yeah, I got my hat on today. It's freezing. Let me give you the gospel. It's in 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. Christ shed his blood for all of our sins, past, present, and future, was buried and rose again on the third day according to scripture. We're saved by grace through faith in Christ alone, not of ourselves, not of works. At least any man should boast. It is grace, something we didn't earn, something we don't deserve, that God gave his only begotten son that whosoever Believe in him will not perish, but have eternal life. How do you come to this? You admit you're a sinner in need of Christ. The moment you put your faith and trust in Christ, the moment you accept Christ as Savior, hmm. not only are you saved, but you are justified by the blood of Jesus. You are Rapture ready, which is going to happen at any time and sealed until the day of redemption, which means you cannot and will not lose your salvation. The Holy Spirit will indwell in you, lead you, guide you, minister to you, encourage you, change you. That's what he does. So this came off of war news and it came out a, a couple of hours ago. It says a domino of developments is coming in the Middle East. This is Jordan recalled its ambassador from Israel and advised the Israeli ambassador to leave. If you hear something in the background, that's Israel. I'm just letting you know. Advise the Israeli ambassador to leave while other states in the region are expected to do the same. At the same time, Iranian Foreign Minister Hossein Abdulian I can call him something else, but you won't like it. Went to Ankara and met with Turkish Foreign Minister, uh, what, Hakan Fadan and Erdogan. Wow. The head of the Turkish and Iranian diplomacy, his name is Fadan, and Hussan Abdelinian today asked Ankara to convene an international conference to avoid regional conflict in the Middle East as soon as possible. Now, don't forget, I did that video this morning about Iran giving them a warning, giving Israel a warning as of 3 o'clock Friday. God only knows what's going to happen with that. Give me one second. So this goes on to say that the countries of the region must assume their responsibilities. Otherwise, the cycle of violence will continue in the region. This is from the Fadan guy. We do not want to harm, or we do not want the human tragedy of Gaza to turn into a conflict that will affect the countries of the region. We are concerned about the geographical spread of the conflict. We have discussed this with our Iranian brother, according to whom there are strong indications that other armed elements in the region could also intervene in the conflict if the conditions do not change. A ceasefire and peace are more important than ever. This is from the Turkish foreign minister. For his part, the Iranian foreign minister warned that if the attacks on the Gaza Strip continues, the consequences will be severe. As to what I just did a video on earlier this morning. If there is no immediate ceasefire in the Gaza Strip and the attacks by the U.S. in the Zionist region continue, then the consequences will be severe. 
Now this goes on to say, we see that it is necessary to create a new security mechanism in cooperation with the actors in the region. Erdogan said that. Says we are ready to take responsibility if this step is taken. Turkish efforts have focused on trying to reach a ceasefire agreement to prevent such an escalation, but some in Ankara believe that Israel and the U.S. do not fully understand what's at stake. A regional escalation would not fall under the preview of NATO or the United Nations, so Ankara believes there is a great need to create a mechanism to regulate tensions in the Middle East. Now, it says, we decided it would be a better approach, it would be better to approach this problem from a more structural perspective as any solution to any problem in the region could be overturned by conflict. We need a permanent solution in the region. We are looking at what kind of mechanism can work for this permanent solution. Now, let me give you the rundown of basically this BS that was just said, because that's all it is. They want Israel dead. They want it, I, they want it, they want Israel off the map. The Bible says it. That's what it is. So, in their eyes, in order to do that, they have to try to eliminate Israel. That's why they gave the warning that they gave earlier. Now, something else came out from more news. Just came out about not even 10 minutes ago. It says fierce fighting is raging and you can hear it in the background. Fierce fighting is raging and these are live feeds inside Gaza and Hamas Islamist using Viet Cong tactics against Israeli soldiers. Now, from what I heard and from what um, what I read, I guess the IDF hit a, got, uh, hit a refugee camp. Well, hate to say it, but that's going to further tick and make this stuff go off the rails. It says Israeli soldiers uh, was ambushed by Hamas in northern Gaza. The Islamic emerged from tunnels and fired anti-tank missiles. Hamas today released video showing its members launching RPG and anti-tank rocket uh, rockets against Israeli tanks and IEDs in the southern uh, neighborhood of Gaza City. So... Um, The IDF announced that at least 326, 326 Israeli soldiers have been killed. So Hal Turner, I'm going to link both of these in the description box. This, this, both of these articles on uh, war news are short. But now... We have another problem. And it's in the US. The US doesn't have enough weapons to fight on US on on the nation soil. We knew that was going to happen. I kept saying that for a year now. But now this has come out. The People's Republic of China has judged the United States of being war addicts. So, as families of anyone know, making such a determination well, 
actually some of that is right. A uniform spokesman for China's People's Liberation Army bought the judgment to the world via a press conference. Says the USA are war addicts. The country has existed for 240 years. In only 16 years, it did not go to war. They built 800 uh, military bases around the world. Whatever, wherever the U.S. military goes, people die. This is from the Chinese Ministry of Defense. Who's going to take over the U.S. soon? Yeah. So Russian President Vladimir Putin said yesterday, the terrible events in the Gaza Strip cannot be justified by anything. <laughs> oh boy. You know what? This starts to irritate me. It just, it really gets me. One dictator after another. He went on to say, we see that the Middle East, instead of punishing terrorists, they begin to take revenge on the principle of collective responsibility. Then Putin let loose with a quiet part that isn't supposed to be said out loud. Behind the conflict in the Middle East, Ukraine, Iraq, and Syria, Syria are the ruling elites of the United States and their satellites. They don't need lasting peace in the Holy Land. They need constant chaos in the Middle East. And this is what Putin said. The U.S. ruling elites without achieving su success on the battlefield are trying to weaken Russia from within. We can only help Palestine in the fight against those who are behind this tra tra uh, tragedy. We are Russia. And we are fighting them as part of a special military operation. Exactly with them. That's the cats. Exactly with them is what he said. Both of both for, our, for ourselves and those who strive for real, true freedom. Now, when I looked at this, the first thing that I thought of was that three o'clock deadline Friday. Because what's going to happen if Iran goes into, and I've said this over and over again, if Iran, leave that alone, if Iran goes into this war, Russia is going to follow. They've been hinting and hinting around to this for the last week now. They will follow. I believe, and I, 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 ha, I would be lying if I didn't say this, because this has really been on my mind. I believe something huge is about to happen. Now, I said that last week that this week something was going to happen, and little by little it is. But it's leading up to something big. It's leading up to something major. Now, Al Turner has a bunch of articles on his uh, site, but I have to be careful what I, how to pick out and decipher each thing. Because like I said, he don't like Israel. Here he goes again. Israel's grotesque military aggression against unarmed civilians in the Gaza Strip continues to have international repercussions. So yesterday, Bolivia server diplomatic relations with Israel. Colombia and Chile have recalled their ambassadors to Israel for consultations about continued diplomatic relations. Bible prophecy. Bible prophecy. Now, in Belgium, transport unions are now refusing to load and unload weapons going to Israel. The Minister of Social Rights in Spain has called for the International Criminal Court to, in to prosecute Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, labeling him a war criminal. The country of Turkey, Erdogan, said yesterday, 
The Israeli administration relying on unconditional support of Europe and America has been committing crimes against humanity in front of the whole world for exactly 25 days. He's He finished by revealing Turkey will take legal action against Israel in the International Criminal Court. China has even gone so far as to remove Israel from its online maps. I did a video on that last night. When you click on Jerusalem, it says Jerusalem, Palestine. Oh, we're going home, folks. The rapture is literally any moment. Literally any moment. The U.S. and Israel are exploring the possibility of multinational force governing Gaza if Israeli force, forces succeed in ousting Hamas. People familiar with the matter told Bloomberg a second option would uh, establish a peacekeeping force molded or modeled um, on one that oversees the 1979 Egypt-Israel peace treaty while a third would see Gaza put under temporary United Nations oversight. Another option would grant temporary oversight to Gaza, to countries from the region, backed by troops from the U.S., U.K., Germany, and France. Ideally, it would also include representation from the Arab nations such as Saudi Arabia or the United Arab Emirates, the people said. So the U.S. and Israel are exploring the possibilities of multinational force of a multinational force governing Gaza. There are also reports that Egypt is considering a deal proposed by Israel that would allow for the forced displacement of Palestinians from Gaza to Sinai in exchange for the cancellation of a significant portion of Egypt's foreign debt. Wait a minute. The Israel, okay, this just came in also. The Israeli cabinet decided to expand its military operations throughout the West Bank. Throughout the West Bank. Well, well, well. <laughs> this happened last night. So, like I've said before, it's just a matter of time, folks. Or the church is gone. And I believe it's going to be sooner. A lot sooner rather than later. I'm going to link all, <laughs> all of these articles in the description box. Um, we're literally, we're, we are right now in World War III. Right now in World War III. And this just came out also. The United States has been told that Iraqi groups, that all, by Iraqi groups, the United States has been told by Iraqi groups that all American troops must leave Iraq immediately or all U.S. bases in that country will be attacked. One American president in Iraq is too much. Today, the Secretary General of the Iraq Islamic Resistance confirmed that the Iraq Re Is Islamic Resistance has decided, has decided to liberate Iraq militarily. The matter has been resolved and what is coming is greater. 
The speakers continue by saying we are in the Islamic resistance. I think Ashab al kaif sent an unequivocal message that we are ready and will continue to strike American bases until our land is liberated. Um, this just came out like two minutes ago. So, um, Lord help. Oh boy. Um, the U.S. Army has placed, and this is another thing that just came out. The U.S. Army has placed approximately 2,000 soldiers on high alert for potential deployment in support of Israel. I don't have a good feeling for this world. Not at all. I'm going to link all of this in the description box and um, I will be back later. Thank you.